Hi guys, Dr. Linda Kramer. Okay, I've got a lot to get through, but this video is a review of Michael Shane. Last Thursday, the 2nd of June 2022, I had the opportunity to go and see Michael Shane. I've put in the description all the links to his um, YouTube and other works if you're willing to go and have a look at Michael Shane and what he does. Not only is he a physical medium where he apports, which means that spirit allows him to manifest objects that he throws up out of his mouth. Yummy. Yes, I've experienced it now. I've seen it. He also does seances and he does amazing psychic abilities. So this is my review of, of what I've seen. So Thursday, the 2nd of June 2022, it was a seance. What happened is that we turned up. I was with Sally, my friend Sally. We turned up and Michael went through the procedures of what would happen. One, he said that anyone could turn up during the seance. So what they do is they blacked out all the lights and the exit signs with gaffer tape. So when they turn off the lights, it was pitch black. Fun, eh? So he said what he does is he goes into his little box, which is like a dressing room size building that they had there. I've got photos, so I'll show you what the little box looks like. Okay, here he is in front of it with me. Okay, so here he is. It's a little box. You can see here, there's the back of it. Okay, so it's just square. Here's the bottom of it. So that line there, that's the little bottom of the cage. So he goes and sits in there and they close the curtain and he brings through or channels his guide who is called Lady Nada. Okay, so there's me with him. So you just saw that, right? Now, I was only sitting about five feet from him. Here's my handbag. So when I put my leg up, I could actually touch his leg. That's how close I was on the Thursday night. Okay, I've got to tell you that because I was that close to him. I actually had a look in the cage. There was no cords, no microphones, no cameras. There was no nothing. It was just the parts of the white plastic making the cage and then he had the um, purple velvet material over the top. That's all that was there. I checked it all out. Believe me, I went through the whole thing looking, okay? <coughs> he had a trumpet, which is called a spirit trumpet. So if you don't know what they are, you can make them out of cardboard by just simply rolling up a piece of um, cardboard. Because I looked at his, I held it. So, whoops, let me just get this right. So you just roll up a piece of cardboard. And you make it one end is bigger than the other. So it's like, sort of like that. So you can see down through it, right? That's a ghost, like a trumpet that they use. So what Michael explained is he brings up this ectoplasm, which goes into the end of the trumpet, and then spirits use it. So it's like a microphone. That's how they use it as a spirit trumpet, okay? So he had one of these. So he said, we're going to turn off the lights. And he said, I want everybody to sound off a number, starting at number one. So where Sally and I were, Sally was right at the end next to Michael. Michael. Then it was me, so I was very close as well. Sally was one, I was two, the lady next to me was three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and it went up to 24. There was 24 people in the room. So there was actually three rows of chairs. He said, we're going to sound off because Lady Nana, La Nada, his lady, you know, like my lady, she doesn't call out by name. She calls out by the numbers, right? So he gave us all this prep about what was going to happen. It was going to be full black. He said, hang on to the person next to you. Hold their hand because we're going to do some omming. And when we om, we stop omming. That's when she could come through. He said, you could get touched. He said, spirits could use that spirit um, trumpet and comes through that way. So he said, anything is possible, okay? So they turned off the lights, we're in pitch black. Oh, they also said we had to take off our jewelry and our glasses. So I had to take off my glasses 
and I had them inside. I had them like this in my jacket, but the other way around, okay? So you had to take off your glasses because things can manifest, things can disappear. So I didn't want to lose my glasses, okay? So I turned them off. So we're all sitting there in the pitch black and we're doing our oms. Om, om, om. We're doing our oms. Then it went quiet. Sitting there in the pitch black. Instantly we heard, Hello! It scared the hell out of me. It was so loud. Now I've forgotten something. Before Michael went into the box, he asked for volunteers. One volunteer put gaffer tape all across his mouth. He had like four layers of gaffer tape. Another one got those, um, you know, those plastic ties, whatever the zip ties, whatever they're called. They're, they're a strip and it's got like a little hollow at one end and you bring it around, you put it through and it ties it up. He got tied to the chair at the wrist, elbow and up here. So he was connected to the chair and he also had all this gaffer tape over him. So he was inside the box with the curtain drawn and then this woman comes through. Hello! My name is Lady Nada. I'm here to answer your questions. It was so loud. So loud. Now, she said, I'm going to start with number one. What's your question? Now, that was Sally. So we were put on the spot straight away. So Sally asked a question and Lady Nada answered it. Number two, where are you? What's your question? And I said, oh, thank you so much for being here, Lady Nada. I have a question, which is blah, blah, blah. So she went through number two, number three, number four, number five, number six, number seven, number eight, number nine, number ten, eleven, twelve, number thirteen. My numbers, the, my lucky number's thirteen. I like you. So she's got a bit of a sense of humour, this lady, which is like mine. She giggles, right? So we went through the whole thing. Then at the end, after she gets to the last person, I think we had 24, she says, um, I'm still, I'm still here. Who else has got some further questions for me? So she's got this up and down like thing. Um, a couple of other people asked questions. She answered. But she spoke for an hour and a half. Hour and a half. High pitched, extremely loud. But there was a problem. Because I was sitting on a chair. Sally was beside me. And in the pitch black, the weird thing is, is that other senses come out. Your hearing is more attuned, right? Yeah? This is science. So as I'm sitting there in the pitch black, I could hear Sally move. Hear this? Yeah? come on through my microphone you can hear me move right I could hear Evie who was working with Michael she was in a chair but she was coughing every now and again <coughs> doing this it wasn't her because she was coughing at the same time this woman was talking so it wasn't Evie but where Michael was in the box not only did I not hear him talk I didn't hear him move it was like he was asleep because he had gaffer tape all over his mouth. So it wasn't him talking. But the voice of this Lady Nada was about three feet above his head, where he would have been inside the box. Because my ears were pricking upwards, and Michael was sitting in line with me. We we're all sitting in the same chairs. So if you've got people all sitting in the same chair, you all, all their heads are at the same height, right? So I could not work that out. That is, the voice was coming from higher than where Michael was inside the cage. There was no speakers. There was no microphones. Because I checked it all before it started. So when, my, when she decided to leave, someone turned on a light. And Michael came out. Oh, he, you know, he, he said, yeah, he was making a noise. So they opened up the cage and he was still all attached to the chair. Like, you know, I've sat here and I thought, 
could have he stood up with the chair attached to him. He had all these ties connected him to the tie, to the chair. Could he stand up for an hour and a half talking so loud for an hour and a half in a different language and a different sex? Because this woman did not have the American accent. So unless he's a ventriloquist, unless he's a very, very good magician, I don't know how he did the seance. So now let's go over to what happened on the Saturday night because this one was different, right? Saturday night, it was called the Apportment and Psychic Show. I think it was Psychic Abilities or something they called it. So please excuse me for that one. So I turned up first. The show started at 7. He, Michael started at 7. I was there at quarter past 6. The hall is extremely tiny. It's like a one-car garage, okay? That's all it was. Far end, there's a little kitchenette. They had a curtain there to separate it so you couldn't see it. Then there was Michael's cage, and then it was there was only 30 chairs that would fit. That's all. That's all there was. So it was three, then a gap, and then another two or three chairs, okay? Depending. And it was only five rows deep. I sat right at the front in the middle right so where the aisle was I was the first chair so again if I put my leg up I could touch Michael that's how close I was right I wanted to be that close I was the first one there with Tashi we walked in the tent was already set up I went through the whole tent I was touching it I I was moving inside where all the um you know when you have your curtain rod um your shower curtain it's got those round ties that all stick together and you can separate it out to pull your shower curtain across it was sort of like that with those round eyelet things on the um, white um, frame of this cage thing. So I was going through the whole, I've spent about five minutes going through the whole thing. There was no microphones, there was no cameras, no cables, there was nothing, okay? There was nothing at all. So I checked all that. Then Michael turned up with some other people, uh, you know, obviously for the show. Um, and I was having a chat with him, etc. So when he started his show, the first thing we all did was um, we did a protection. Oh, we did a protection on Thursday night too. I better clarify that. Okay. He did a big protection, um, like a prayer. And he said, what I want you all to do, I'm going to pass around pens and these little cards are about this big. He said, on one side, put a number. He said, please write big so spirit can see it he said big big number on one side and on the other write your question so everyone had pen and paper as they did that he said i want someone to come up and blindfold me so what michael had was two american silver dollars now if you know the american silver dollars are about this round right so he had two he put them over his eyes and then he got someone to gaffer tape a cross, like a cross. So he could not see. Then he put on one of those eye masks, like you do when you're sleeping. Then he got a bandana and put that around as well to make it all really tight. How can you see through that? So he had the coins, then the gaffer tape, then the mask, and then the bandana. So it was four layers, right? How the hell does that work? So as they put him into the cage, because you know, he's now blind, they closed the door and we all wrote our questions in our numbers on the card and they brought around a box. It was it, It's like a big shoe box, okay? It was about this long, about that deep, about that wide, right? Like a big shoe box. I looked in the box and there was nothing in there that would support any sort of um, manipulation of what was going on. So we all had one of these cards. I wrote 35 on mine. So I wrote 35 and on the back it was about six words, my questions, will I do da 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 da. Okay. Will I be famous? No, it wasn't that. Okay. <laughs> <coughs> So they brought Michael out, they put the box on his lap, 
they took off he still was blindfolded this is the thing he was still blindfolded he reached into the box 35 Evie was sitting there next to him the worker and she's there yep number 35 so I knew it was my number, right? Because you could see that it's my writing. He said, of course, blah, 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 blah. So he confirmed what the question was. So he gave the card to Evie and she said, will I, da, 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 da. So you could tell that the answer was in line with the question. Some of the questions were, what are my spiritual gifts? So his answer, which was before we knew the question, he said, um, of course you've got spiritual gifts. I can see that you're a medium, so please start connecting with spirits. And then Evie yells out, what are my spiritual gifts? The next one says, yes, I can see you travelling there, um, but not for another two years. And the question was, will I ever travel to Sydney? Um, another one was, um, will I ever get... Um, he said, yes, you're going to get through the blockages of your life. You, um, you've just got to overcome and get your own um, confidence in what you do and the, the question was will I get through my blockages and he was telling everybody their numbers as well okay so there was over there was about 30 people there he got all the numbers right thing that I cannot debunk here he was pulling out cards out of the box but he was saying the number before it was even out of the box so if there was someone in the audience watching to see what the number was, and sometimes he pulled it out like this, so you couldn't even see what the number was. So how did this work? You know, he was pulling out a card and he'd say, oh, 35, pull it out, and you couldn't even see what it was because his fingers are over it. Um, and Evie would say, oh, give me the card. So she'd say, yep, number 35, who's that? Um, it wasn't all just two numbers either, like two digits. What some of the numbers were 7707, um, 268486. So there was eight or six numbers in some people's numbers. Some people wrote a date like this. And he said, oh, I don't know if it's 1217, one, but there's a line there. And Evie looked at it and she said, oh, yeah, there is a line in it like a date. And he said, oh, yeah, so it's 12th of the 7th, like that. Um, if you're in America, that'd be the 7th of the 12th, right? But he, he said it the right way around. Um, so in America, we do the date first. So that's, that's, that represents the 12th of, Janu um, 12th of July here in Australia. Um, then he got one. Um, it was actually my daughter's because my daughter, she writes 27 like this. And he said, oh, it looks, it's, I think it's 424. And he said, no, 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 there's a line there. I don't know what it is. It's, um, is it 24? So Evie looked at it and she said, no, it's actually a, a weird seven with a line through it. So it's actually 20, 27, not 24. So that was my daughter. She confused him a little bit with the line on the seven. So that was enough of the party trick because not only did he get every single person's number right, he answered their questions using the words that were in the question. So he didn't just say, your answer is yes. He would say something like, "You will get rid of your blockages." And then when you when he read out when Evie read out the question, "Will I get rid of blockages?" So he was repeating the words back that were actually written on the cards. I don't know how he did that. I was amazed. I can't debunk it. I really can't debunk it. But this next thing that he did was even weirder. So they took off all the blindfolds. So now we can see again. And, you know, you can tell when someone's been in the dark for a while because the eyes are all just weird and you can see the rings from where the gaffer tape and the coin was. Yeah? You know what, what I'm talking about? Like if, if I've got a drink bottle here, if I press this against my cheek for a couple of seconds, right? See how you see where it was? Okay. Um, but he had the, the things from where the, the coins were there. So he didn't take the coins off when he went into the cage because he he did all these where he did all this 
And then they pulled it all off so you could see layer one, layer two, layer three, and then the coins under the gaffer tape. So he, he had had all that on for the whole process. Okay? So then he says, now I'm going to report. So they put out this, um, like a little sheet thing in front of him, and he started throwing up. Now, I don't want to make his gag here, but you know what it's like when you throw up? It's like a funnel of phlegm comes out of your mouth, right? It's like a sausage, but you take off the skin of a sausage and it all just bleh, right? When Michael threw up, there was no liquid. I'll call it fluid, okay? There was no fluid. So when he threw up on this towel, and I'm going to be honest here, guys, there was a lot that came out. About 300 gems came out of his mouth onto this towel. So they put it on the table and they started sorting it out. So I got down there too with them and I was starting to sort it all out. So you have all your green, there was green peridots, there's um, amethysts, there was rubies, there was black onyxes, there was other stones that he was putting, we're just separating them all. And the thing was, he also brought up a ring. So this is a ring here. Um, so I've got a photo of me holding the ring. Here it is. So I took a photo of me holding the ring that came out of his mouth. There was no liquid on it. It was dry. And this was only about two minutes after it came out of his mouth. So what I did, I do not suggest you do this because I don't want anyone to choke or die or then sue me because don't sue me, okay, because I'm not liable because I'm not telling you to do this, okay. But when I got home on Sunday night, I picked up a little object, I put it in my mouth, I walked around with it in my mouth for about two minutes, and then I spat it out. The whole thing was covered with saliva. It was all wet and chuck. I had to dry it. Ugh. Ugh. But these things that all came out of Michael's mouth, not only were they dry, there was nothing on the sheet, because that is the towel. That's the towel. It was dry. There was nothing on it. Because I was right there. Like you can see I'm right there. Like, uh, if I do that so you can sort of see it. Actually, if I turn this off for a minute. No, that's not even going to help. Okay. So so that's his towel that he just threw up in. This lady here, she's just got a torch on it. So we could see all the colours of the gemstones. So what he said was, everyone come up from the end. Everybody come up from the end. End row first. You're all getting some stones. So everyone's going through. My friend Sally was there. She got probably 20 of the black onyxes. Then I got called in. And I'll show you what I got. These are my three. I got three. So I got... Oops, start again. I got a amethyst. I got a ruby. Hello. I'm glad I got a ruby because everything I love is red. So there's a ruby. If I just flick him on the red so you can see that he's red. Right, that's a ruby. And I also got a big black um, onyx. So he's actually quite big. Alrighty, so there's my black onyx. Okay. So I got the three. I'm more than happy getting three. I don't know if you heard that. There was a noise in my house just then. Um, it's all good. Alright, so what did my daughter Tash get? Because she was there. First of all, I'll show you a photo of my daughter Tash. Because I don't usually show her on my shows. There's my daughter Tash with Michael Shane. Now, as you can see, they're pulling down his box. If there was cameras, if there was my video recording, if there was any sort of trickery... They would not be pulling down that box while we were all there, right? No. So there's Tashi with Michael Shane. That's my girl. She got all the green peridots. He actually said to her, you're to make jewellery with this and wear it as your protection. So I'm just going in to get one of her little peridots just to show you what they look like. That's what Tashi got. 
so then they're, they're not just little thinny guys so there you go that's a side view okay so she's got 23 of the little suckers <laughs> how fast did she count them when she got home yeah <laughs> 16 year old yeah so she was what he got the most sally got about 20 of the black onyxes but hers are only about half the size of these so tashi got the most look what she got all the green wow at least i got i got my ruby because you can see there's my ruby because it's red um amethyst and the black black onyx i got okay so they're the three that i got okay so <coughs> let me go there do i believe he was real yes i was too close to him i had the ability to spend time looking at all his equipment i saw him throw up and there was no liquid in that it was just it all coming out and they were all already dry i'm not suggesting you go put anything in your mouth please don't do it just because i'm selling you to but i've done it I put something in my mouth for about two minutes, I spat it out and it was covered in saliva. Everything that came out of his mouth had no saliva, no mucus, no phlegm, that everything was dry when it hit that towel. I was seeing those gems physically bouncing on the towel as, though, as he was throwing them out and they were bouncing on the towel as they were coming out of his mouth. Um, would I go and see him again? He's coming back here in July. I've already got my tickets organised. That's how much I believe this guy is real. Um, I believe it. Um, if you do watch um, Medium Mike Cavalli on Wednesday nights at 7pm Brisbane time. So please ask Suri what time is it in Brisbane, Australia find out when 7 p.m brisbane is because on medium mike cavalli we've actually spoken about michael shane a few times this week which will be the 8th six seven eight yep 8th of june we're doing a show um we've actually got michael on there as well where i talk a little bit more about what i've seen with him i'll be showing these gems that he threw up again um yeah 300 gems came out of his mouth you know there was 30 people there we all got stuff you know look what tashi got in comparison you know that wouldn't even fit in my mouth like look at my mouth compared to that that's enough right and he bought up 30 times that so i don't understand how he did it so my review today let's just go there do i think he was a fake he's not a fake if he is a physical medium that he calls himself I believe it if he is a magician I believe it there is nothing fake about this man whatever art he has is legitimate um, I cannot debunk it that's how good this was because I was sitting so close to him in the links below in the description I'm going to put some of Michael Shane YouTube clips in there okay I'll dig up some links to put in the video. Um, please watch them if you want and come up to your own um, theory on what he does. If you've physically actually been to one of Michael's shows and you want to talk about it, please contact me at linda at lindaray.info because I would love to discuss what you've personally seen, um, what happened when you went and saw him and if you can debunk it at all because i cannot debunk this guy at all there you go i think he's the real deal um if someone said to me a year ago linda you're going to go see this guy that throws up all these rings and gemstones i actually put the ring on my finger there was no phlegm on it at all like i've got a ruby this is my ruby ring yeah, you know, I'm just going to do it. I'm going to do it live here now. God, I hope this doesn't make a gang. Please do not do this at home because I don't want to be sued, okay? There you go. That's enough. Oh, my God, look, it's all just such... Oh, God, look, there's all chucky on it. 
Hang on, I'll get a tissue. Hang on, I'll get a tissue. Look, the tissue broke because it's all wet. Look, you can see it's just wet just from me just doing that little bit. Okay? Look at that. Just from that, like, half a minute in my mouth. Look how wet it was. Okay? You can see it. Look here. Look there. It's all, sat it's all saliva. When these came out, there's not one drop of fluid. Huh. That's how I know is real. Talk to you all again soon, guys. Okay? Bye. To learn more about your Solistic Alignment, please press the like button and click subscribe. To purchase any of Dr. Linda Kramer's books or services, please visit www.lindaray.info.